it's dry bear we finally have an update for the may release so may 6 today we are looking at the destined for destruction may update reveal this isn't the actual official patch notes so in here they didn't give us any very detailed specifics but they're it's kind of like an outline of the content that we're going to get in the patch uh so today we're going to go through all the little details i'm going to do my best to show you all the features uh, that are coming uh, so that you can get ready for all that so let's go but first if you have any questions or comments for me you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash dry bear who knows i might even be streaming right now let's start with this heroes of vacation the last month's april and may roadmap we gave a first look at what you could expect in may's major update we discussed our approach of monitoring player progression uh such as the vault and legion raid and the discolluted garden raid after closely monitoring we feel that enough of our player base has reached the item level needed to participate or was within easy striking distance to get there over the next few weeks and i've decided this is the right time for these activities so we are getting discolluted the 1415 guardian and we are getting vault in normal in hard mode which is the first legion commander in the game so good stuff he brings relic equipment so that's going to be awesome and accessories as well it's never a goal for players to feel they need to pay to progress and players who haven't reached the item level shouldn't feel pressured continue to enjoy the journey of exploration and challenge yourself at your own pace for newer players eager to hit the high levels required we hope that the express missions and extension of the guardian made event will help progress so no new uh help it seems they they think that what they've provided is enough uh, as existing fans of lost ark know there are still many activities challenges enemies and more that have yet to be released and we can't wait to bring more okay so that's good uh, Legion Raid, Vault in, Normal, and Hard Modes. So this is the first Legion Commander in the game. He will introduce Legion Raids into the Western version of Lost Ark. Uh, and there's a couple cool things about how they changed Legion Raids after they introduced um, the Abyss Raids that we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but for Vault in, he's the first Legion Commander. Uh, he's the guy that got embarrassed by uh, Thyrain uh, and his Broken Sword. Uh, and uh, it is an eight player Legion raid that has two gates, which is two phases. And what's cool about Valton versus um, something like Argos is you can actually do them with separate queues. You don't have to do it in one run. You don't have to end it early and get rewards and then be locked out for the rest of the week. Uh, so we'll, um, so that's, that's one of my favorite parts about Legion raids and an improvement that we'll get from there. You'll need to reach 1415 to do normal and you'll need to reach 1445 for hard. Uh, and it will give relic accessories. And it does unlock the South Vern Chaos Dungeon and Chaos Gate and Chaos Line, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, yeah, really, really cool stuff. Uh, we're also going to get Descaluda, which is the 1415 Guardian. It is the first raid level six Guardian, first of four. Uh, so this is going to be another way for us to get more materials, a new encounter, uh, and that's going to be good stuff as well. Similar rewards to Vaulton, uh, and we'll have relic uh, equipment and accessories as well. Well, accessories, really. Destroyer Advanced Class. We've talked about the cataclysmic impact warriors out by the battlefield. Yada, yada, yada. Flavor text. Flavor text. Destroyer will join the Berserker Paladin and Gunlancer as the fourth warrior advanced class, um, which is really cool. Um, I don't think they said it here, but they are going to be bringing the balance changes as well. Um, but I think it's coming up. Additional May content, Challenge Guardian Raids is a new weekly activity players looking for a challenge. If you're wondering what the empty space is next to the Guardian Raids board, it is the Expert or the Heroic Guardian Raids board uh, next to it. So Guardian Raids themselves, uh, as you'd expect, you have these that you do every single week. They give you the two souls, but these are weekly events. So you'll get three different Guardians. Um, I can, as a developer, I can tell you this is a way for them to reuse old content. So it, it's going to use any Guardian in the game. You're going to get, you know, even the early Guardians, which may even have high rank versions of them. Um, so you get Chromanium, you can get Velganos. Um, but what this does is if you ever see Balance of Harmony here, it means that everyone is scaled to the Guardian's level. So all of your gear, everything gets scaled down so that you are equal eye level to the Guardian, uh, which can be pretty challenging depending on uh, what you have for engravings and what classes you're using. Some classes are better in, in scaled content. Um, like Glaviers are good because they have a big buff that they can get, which means they don't need as much gear when it's scaled down. Um, but what's cool about these is all the rewards that you get are account bound. So you can get a whole bunch of rewards. Uh, it's a good way to get, um, you know, engravings every single week. You'll get tradable mats based on whatever uh, eye level you're completing it on. And then you can get all kinds of stuff. But all of these are account bound. This used to be you would do uh, three heroic guardians per week per character. But now it's roster, uh, and I think that was a good change that they made recently. 
Um, so they made it so it's it, your whole roster. You only need to do uh, each of these once. You can get all the rewards from it. And then everything you get from it is tradable across your whole roster. So that's the challenge guardian raids. Uh, once per roster per week. And then, yeah, it's it's a, a wider set of rewards, including engravings and things like that. So it's going to be useful. New quest overworld activities. Uh, we're finally getting the chaos line hard mode, uh, which I think some people are starting to not do their chaos line every week uh, just to save up for when the pass launches. We'll get a field boss thunder wings. Uh, the South Vern Chaos Gate, and then the South Vern Ghost Ship. The Chaos Gate means that you can then spend your Rift Shards on uh, maps for this as well. Uh, and then the South Vern Chaos Dungeons, which does give Relic Accessories, I think, on the second tier of that. So once we have South Vern activated for Chaos Gate or Chaos Dungeons, uh, the first step, which is 1415, we will get the, the Tripod Armor that drops, and then we'll get the Ability Stones. The accessories will still be Legendary, and you can get everything else from that. And then when you get to 1445 on step two for South Vern, then you start getting relic accessories. And these are these are tradable, obviously. So uh, a really big jump for us. And obviously, once this stuff is out and we have Descaluda and Vaulton, the auction house will start having that stuff available. So even if you're not 1445, if you get to 1415, you can equip the relic gear and then you can uh, get stuff from the auction house if you've been saving up. We get Wild Wings Island, which is, um, oh, this is the, the chicken fried. Yeah. Okay. Players turn to a chicken or beer to battle the chicken boss to earn event coins. So this is our event island we can get. Um, there's some good rewards in here, uh, but another activity for us, a new open world activity, which is pretty cool. Um, we're getting new guild activities. We're finally getting island sieges and raid matches. So if you've been working on your guild, um, and you've been looking for guild activities to do, these are pretty cool. Uh, the Island Siege is a PvP uh, activity where you can battle other guilds, which is pretty cool. The Raid Match is you enter a base with your guild and challenge uh, a powerful demon monster. And then there's just like guild rankings and things like that. And you can actually get loot from the Island Siege as well, which is pretty cool. Now we're also getting Naria's Wardrobe. Uh, so this is a, if you like slice of life, real life skins um, that are sold piecemeal, this is what this is. It's almost like if your character went to the mall and was uh, clothes shopping uh, is kind of, I guess, what Naria's wardrobe is trying to reproduce. Now, this was recently launched in Korea, um, and I th uh, like la like end of last year, um, and it's a very casual, real life kind of thing. But the way this works, and I think you access it from your uh, stronghold, I actually don't remember, but it basically is a whole bunch of real life skins that are sold as pieces. So you can get sweaters, you can get dresses, uh, you can get shoes, you can get uh, you know, heels, you can get hats, you can get glasses, all kinds of things. Um, and these are all sold separately and most of them are dyeable. So it's like I said, it's like your character goes to the mall and gets to like go to different shops and buy clothes. Um, and then this is only going to be able for a limited time. So there's like a leather jacket, ripped jeans, uh, there's a little bow. Uh, I guess there's like a bike helmet. So I don't know if what all is going to be included in our version of the wardrobe. Um, but most of these should be purchasable at the time. Um, through in-game, and these items are all individual piecemeal. Uh, so you'll be able to pick these up, but the wardrobe is only active for a time period. I think they mentioned in the patch that it's only going to be up for like a month. Um, so once you, yeah, so this is going to be like purchase here. Once you, once it's gone, I don't know if you can get these items ever again, but it is pretty cool that they're going to have that in-game. Um, oh, you can even preview these, huh? Right, so you can see what these look like, uh, different party looks, whatever. So yeah, there's going to be these real life kind of skins. Uh, with different versions and colors and all kinds of things that you can buy inside the wardrobe. So that is the wardrobe. So if you're looking for more skins, especially real life skins, like modeling, modern fashion, things like that, that's the wardrobe. Quality of life updates. Uh, this this is like the world's smallest paragraph that has some of the best features that you definitely should be excited about. And I'm going to do my best to show a lot of these. Uh, so quality of life updates. We're finally getting the front and back attack indicators which looks like this. So any boss that is uh, of boss level or, or you know, boss level or higher that has back and front, uh, you're going to get these markers in game, which is really, really cool because uh, then you can see where the head attack starts and where it ends uh, and where the back attack starts and where the back attack ends. There's a couple really good benefits from this um, as we look at this is that one, any boss that has an animation where you... What they, they lay down, like Night Fox Yoho is one of them, one of the, the ghost ship boss is one of them, where they actually lay down and th their physical back is no longer where their back is anymore. This problem is fixed uh, with this indicator. But it also means like if you see like right here, uh, where I'm standing like right next to him, 
you can see that you can get head attack like right here you can get back attack on the side here um so you can actually stand at a safe side and look at it um without having to like you don't have to go right here you can see exactly where the cutoff is for a head and back attack so this feature is really really cool so that's a cool feature front and back attack indicators the next is the ability to check daily and weekly content participation in a new menu i I guess we'll have to wait to the notes. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by this because there's two different areas uh, in Korea that you can do this on. The first is going to be your daily progress. So when you do quickly change characters, you can actually see the characters uh, daily content progress. Uh, so like what they've done, what they haven't done, how much rest did they have? And you can change this checklist as well. You can say, I want to track this, 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 and it'll show up here and you can see what the activities are, uh, which is really cool. I, the, a quick game menu added onto this. But they said new menu, so I'm wondering if we get the uni no, if we get the um, the unified end game screen, which is right here. So you can actually on each character, you can see um, who is on this, like what you've done. You can see how much rest bonus you have, and from this menu, which is huge, you can open the menu out of it, right? And it hitting escape goes back. So if you want to queue for chaos dungeons, you can. If you want to queue for guardian raids, you can. All this is here in the unified endgame menu. Now, the fact that they said endgame menu, I'm guessing because they said in a new menu, it means we're going to get the unified endgame, uh, and that would be awesome. Uh, but either way, I think it's a good feature. Uh, both are great features. Having one or both would be really cool. UI updates, which um, I'm not even sure why this is here, because this is a very meaningless... Uh, uh, they, okay, stuff is happening. Uh, improved party finder and party invites. These are really cool. There's a lot of cool features uh, in, in Korea that we don't have yet that make this a little bit more enjoyable and easier. Uh, updated looting, loot dismantling. So here's some of the things that they have that we don't that might come in this update based on their description. Um, the biggest thing is going to be the automatic dismantle. Gets a lot more updates on it. So you can change um, when you, you know, when you want to have it dismantled. So I think we only have down to here uh, in, uh, in the West, but they have more options here. So you can change which stat you want to ignore. So if it has domination on it, or if it has uh, endurance or something, you, you just always want to get rid of it. And then if it has uh, engravings you're looking for or tripod notifications, which you set in your skill menu, if, you if it has a tripod on it, you can keep it. Uh, if it doesn't, you can get rid of it. So some really cool things um, that are in here uh, that really work well. Uh, and then you can change what those settings are. So it, it just makes, it's getting closer to having like a, a loot filter that you get in like Path of Exile, which is awesome since if you have a lot of characters, especially you're going through a lot of loot every single day. Now, I'm not sure what uh, convenience features for the auction house means. Again, this is very vague, uh, but there are some really cool things that might come to us, which we get these pieces here. But I think the big thing is uh, if you are looking for a specific item in, in West and you change what the item is, uh, it'll wipe everything and you have to search all over again. Uh, you'll be able to keep some of the, uh, some of the things that you have on the item itself without having to lose them. And then new fun features like being able to randomly summon favorited mounts and new hairstyles. So that's cool. And I think the new hairstyle is gonna be really awesome because then you can uh, get new customizations for each character. And I think you, I think we still have tickets for changing your appearance um, that haven't expired yet. So you might be able to just switch to the new hairstyles on your main if you want, um, but that's coming. And then this one is the biggest one. Now what I'm inferring from this change uh, the, the fact that they, so this is balance and tuning updates. They included a rework of destroyer class, which feels amazing, by the way. It makes them feel a lot better. I'm super happy with how they changed him. Um, they are, they said that they're going to be taking the balance patch and bringing it along with this new update. And I hope this is everything that we got in Korea, uh, because I think there's a lot of really good changes that I'm excited about, um, that make some of the classes feel a lot better. And it's also mixing up how the classes are played which is really cool. So I hope this is uh, in its entirety, the whole balance patch and they were caught up, um, at least on how the characters play and, and the function of them. Um, and then we get to do things you know, I want to be able to dodge roll out of my turret on my artillerist. I want my death strike sharpshooter to be able to build meter with his Fenrir ultimate and, and things like that. So that's going to be really, really cool. It also gives a red stance counter um, to Glavier. It gives a counter to bards. It's uh, usable in their normal kit rotation. So there's all kinds of things in here that I would love to have included in the patch. But let me know what you think. What are you most excited about? Uh, are you excited about having wardrobe? Is it a destroyer? Is it uh, being a, a chicken fried chicken? 
Are you trying to be uh, de defeating Descaluda? Are you ready for Vaulton? Are you at 14, 15 or higher? Uh, you know, so that's that's what we got coming. That's the, the update. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.